What do you think? How computers evaluate us? If I were to ask a computer, what do you think? How would you score me? Am I 50, 60, 70? What score would you give me? You'll be surprised. Why would computers score us? The topic of my discussion today is how actually computers see us. We're at the beginning of a new era where we are being ranked by computers. Artificial intelligence rank us, give us a score. This score affects our life. This score affects employment opportunities, dramatically impa impact financial opportunities we get, dating opportunities, we're being scored. So let's try to understand how computers scores us and what is the industry that we see from artificial intelligence or what we call cognitive computing into the labor world. So let's start uh, by an episode from Nosedive. Nosedive is a satire on acceptance and the image of ourselves we like to portray and project to others. It stars Bryce Dallas Howard, who's fantastic, and she's playing a character called Lacey, who lives her life trying to please everyone. Lacey is lost. She's lost herself in this world where she thinks that her value is equivalent to her points. Two starts. Two stars? Wasn't a meaningful encounter. Everyone is a little bit heightened and false because everyone's terrified of being marked down because the consequences of that are unpleasant. So it's basically the world we live in. <laughs> Black Mirror. Black Mirror by Charlie Brooker tried to portray the reality we live in. Charlie Brooker says if you just don't pay attention for 10 minutes, that will be our world. He gives us something which looks very much like the world we know. We are in Facebook, we are in LinkedIn, we're being ranked all the time. People like us, they share what we do, they score us. We don't see official scoring, but he projects a reality that soon enough we'll have some kind of a score. Says, I'm four. Near is definitely a five. There's someone here in the room that might be three. And he said there'll be consequences. If you saw the episode in Black Mirror, there's consequences for being ranked low. It means that you may not live in the kind of neighborhood you wanted. Your children cannot apply for a particular school. You'll probably not be invited for a job interview. We said, OK, but that's just TV. No. That's China. In China, they do have a score. It's called Sesame. It was a project that started by the fact that in China, they experienced the largest migration of people from the rural areas to the cities that humanity ever experienced. 400 million people are migrating, and they had a problem. How could I trust someone to give them a loan? First job, get them into my class, date them. There's a problem. How can you trust people that came with no data about them? They were looking at systems like we have in the US, like the credit scoring, but the problem of the system in the US, it's very much geared toward financial arrangements. You needed to have a bank accounts, to take loans, to have financial records, for people to evaluate your credit worthy. And also it was focused on financial services. It wasn't fit for the Chinese uh, migrants to the city. So they needed a new system. They went to the leading Chinese companies, Alibaba, Huawei, Tencent, Chiwi. We in the Western world, less familiar with the names, but they told them, you have a lot of data. People are doing their communication, trade, commerce, play. They do everything in your platforms. Can you come up with some ranking model? And they came. It's called Sesame. They said, let's understand how you interact with people, what the social interactions look like, what wording do you use, do you get vulgar in social communication, have you been posting something that upset a lot of people, did you get some, I don't know, ticketing by the municipality, we'll collect the data, we'll give you a score, 
And in China now, you're being scored from 300 to 900. This is your score, and it's not only on your individual score, they also say who you socialize with should impact your score. Tell me who your friends, and I'll tell you how should I score you. So there is implications of who you socialize with. I have Chinese students that I teach, they say, actually, let's create the kind of discipline we want. This is a social ranking system. If you are a good family person, if you act in good faith in trade, if you socialize nicely, you'll get a high score. When I give this lecture to people in the Western world, they said, okay, but that's China. And we know China announced that by 2022, it will be a mandatory system. People will be entitled for loans, governmental projects, the ability to apply in public tenders based on their score. It's already started in China. But it says, okay, but what's relevance for our life in the Western world? We are scored. And not only we are scored, we have much more robust system that is being developed. What I want to show you today is how actually technology starts to evaluate us psychologically and to give us a precise score as part of any platform of marketing, advertising, education, job opportunities. This platform is being developed primarily by the large cognitive players or AI players. I'll show you like Watson. We know Watson, he won in chess, but he also developed what we call the cognitive skills. This is something that I don't know if you're familiar with, it's called the Big Five. This is the most common psychological test of how to evaluate people. There are five dimensions. Openness, how open we are as individuals. Uh, extraversion, whether we are invert or extroverts. Aggressive, agreeableness, do we tend to agree or to dispute? Uh, neuroscepticism is whether kind of like how balanced emotionally we are. And indicate of self-discipline on how organized a person is. When we go to Pilat or other tests and we do kind of like these tests with many questions, they try to rank us. We're accustomed to it. But how technology does so, that's IBM. IBM is part of Watson have now what they called the cognitive engine or cognitive insights. Get them access to person social network or just the ability to tap into information about the individual and then score them. This individual is 88% openness. He's only 26% agreeableness. He tends to dispute things. He's 30% extrovert. But IBM not only give the score. They now give to an API something more interesting. It's a full map of the individual. You can get it in a chart, or you can get it coded as a score for each individual. How they do so? They run with artificial intelligence on all the data about you, your postings, your photos, social interactions. How do you describe yourself like in LinkedIn or in Facebook? What is written about you? And they try through several mechanisms of artificial intelligence, what we call natural language processing, social graph analysis, understanding your social interactions, emotional analysis, kind of like sentiment analysis that's surrounded to it, they're trying to understand in each one of these parameters how specifically to define the individual. So it's not an interview, it's not a test, it's not a social interaction, it's an artificial intelligence engine then that's running on all the content about you and trying to understand you as a person. But it's more than that. They actually do what we call cross traits. They say, how is a person that, for example, at that level of openness is the intersection with this level of extraversion? And they give a precise description of this person, whether he's predictable, not predictable, imaginative, non-imaginative, whether he's kind of like easily to get in dispute. And they offer it as an API, meaning as an open interface. So now if you are recruiting, you can say, okay, I want this particular kind of person. I want a 72 agreeableness with 
65 openness, and it's very important to me to not to go under the bar of 50 like in um, extra version. And you score them, and the way that you filter the results, the people that you get, is only by their specific score. You don't see the others. You want to see uh, implementation of it, which is even more shocking? This is a company called Crystal AI, and they say to you, you know what? If you're a recruiter, use this tool. Use an add-on on top of your Chrome, it's an extension, that every time we see an individual, like a LinkedIn profile, we immediately analyze all the information we see in LinkedIn and everything that is available on the open web about this individual, and we'll get you a personality map immediately. I didn't want to embarrass anyone, so I show it on myself, which is embarrassing enough. <laughs> this is me in LinkedIn, and I just install, as you see, this view personality. This is an add-on. This is a Chrome add-on. So every time I see a LinkedIn profile, I just linked on this add-on, and it tells me about this individual. It said, Nimrod tends to communicate directly and make decisions independently, sometimes disregarding existing structures or standards, meaning that if you want someone who is disciplined, I'm not a guy for you. And they say other things about Nimrod. They give the map, what you see there in colors, is exactly how I'm located in the Big Five map, which is a multi-dimension scoring of the individual. But not only that, they offer you premium services. They say, if you want about Nimrod, if I need to call Nimrod, you see there, if I need what action I need to do, I need to call Nimrod, I need to be interviewed by Nimrod, I need to sell to Nimrod, they give you a suggestion. You says what I need to do with Nimrod. They'll give you a script, kind of like the words to use, what words you should refrain from. That's the second phase. They say about over you about Nimrod, communication skills, motivation, words that would describe me. And they go later and says, okay, now let's go into details what I'm being motivated, what, what my value set, and there's even a premium. This is only about my personality. The two additional elements that Watson provide is my set of values. There is what we call values chart, so it provides my values, and also what you call my intentions, what motivates me. So it's not only my personality. This skill is called personality mapping or personality scoring. What I wanted to show you in this presentation is that something that looked to us at the beginning, okay, that's a TV show. We don't take it too seriously. What does it mean that I'm 421 or I'm 378? We saw in the black mirror that there might be consequences for that. I might not get a job, not get a loan, a recruiter would not call me, but that was some kind of, you know, in the Hollywood way of presenting it. The real way of presenting it is that Amazon, as Watson now is saying to anyone, from recruiter to a developer of a tool, adapt our cognitive engine. So we're going to background, ask us to give you cognitive insights about individuals, and you are to be the one to determine the result. So I have two more minutes or one more minute? One more minute. So, what could be, for example, the consequences? If I'm using now IBM cognitive uh, processes uh, of Watson, I deploy it as part of my recruiting platform, and as a recruiter, every time that I analyze a candidate, I analyze through personality traits, values, and intentions, define the score that above this score, I want to see individual, under this score, I don't want to see individual, and actually filter reality through this scoring. So next time you're not invited to a job interview, it's not because they didn't like your picture or what you wrote about you, it's because an artificial intelligence engine thought that you scored too low for this job. Next time that you would not be uh, offered some kind of training opportunity, is because you scored 
not according to what the scoring of the API. We know this reality. We get loans or don't get loans based off the credit scoring, how risky we are. But start living in a reality that there is a social score or individual score. And this score that is being determined by artificial intelligence dictate the opportunities in our life. Thank you very much.